conversations with God for all this pastors. Our faith is what got us through all the troubles and disasters. Indeed, we fell short, but the Lord never passed us. Our belief in God is the most important factor. It's the Velika B Project. You're now tuned in to the Velika B Project with your host, Velika B, lover of God, founder and CEO of Set Apart and Chosen. Sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation. Hey guys, your girl Valika B, founder and CEO of Southern Part and Chosen. I'm laughing at myself because I was I had a whole spill going on in the background and I forgot to bring myself on. So y'all just forgive me, please, and thank you. So do me a favor really quick so we can get started with this broadcast. My name is Valika. I am the founder and CEO of Settle Part and Chosen. And this is the Velika B Project. I have some amazing guests. But as I'm looking down, I'm trying to share this broadcast as well. So if you can share the broadcast really quick, it would be amazing. But let me just drop up really fast who we have in the building. And while I'm bringing up our guests, do me a favor, drop in the comments where you're logging in from. That will be awesome, awesome, awesome. So hold on really quick. Let me bring up. My graphic. <laughs> Y'all, tonight we have PJ Morton and Jojo Martin. <laughs> PJ, Jojo, brothers. What's yes, going yes. on? I'm excited to have you guys in the building with me on tonight. Really quick, I want to do some introductions. PJ is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer, songwriter, producer, and you're also the founder of new, a New Orleans based Martin Records. Jojo Martin is a seasoned singer and worship leader. I love Jojo. I'm sorry. I love both y'all. <laughs> As a songwriter, um, he has placed songs, songs on the albums of Fred Hammond, James Fortune and Fire. Um, Glenn Moore, the Pay Sisters, Bishop Paul Martin, and as a singer, um, he has a unique gift of voice and tone that makes him stand out from other gospel artists on the horizon. So I am introducing my brothers to you guys. And do me a favor, as you come in, family, share this broadcast. This will be on our podcast later on, in the, well, tomorrow morning. But really quick, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we get started, PJ and JoJo, would y'all like to say anything to our audience really quick? Uh, I just say what's up to everybody. It's good to see y'all in the room with us. Uh, excited to just hang for a little minute. Yeah. Awesome. Go ahead, JoJo. <laughs> And I second what Pete said. Excited to be here. Excited to have this time. And, you know, let's get into it. It's going to be dope. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. First of all, I want to go ahead and address PJ. <laughs> Congratulations mm -hmm. on your new single, um, Please Don't Walk Away, which is one of the fastest moving songs on Billboard adult R&B um, charts. Is there any other albums? Well, is there an album in the works for you? Uh, yes. There is. I'm actively um, writing and and, uh, and working on some new music right now. So I'm excited. I, I, I've been taking my time with this. You know, I want to be really intentional uh, with what I say and put out there. So but I'm excited. Yes, I am working on a new album. Awesome. And I do want to say you sounded amazing last night on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good time. Thank you. Yeah, Jeffrey. that was a great <laughs> look. That was a great look. So you are the king of independent artist grind. You and your oh. team have accomplished things and gotten looks that some artists sign um, to legendary labels um, to not even achieve. So what fuels your grind? 
what fuels my grind. I mean, you know, to start, I think I, I genuinely, you know, love what I do. I genuinely love uh, putting, doing music, you know, creating music and being able to perform uh, that said music in front of an audience and have them respond and, and have them interact with you. Uh, so I think the love ultimately is what fuels me. Um, I would say money, but there was <laughs> there was times that I was doing it and there was no money at all. So uh, that that's definitely not my fuel, you know. Uh, that's that's a, a added a added thing that 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 makes it all worthwhile. But yeah, ultimately, it's just the love of it. Awesome, awesome. And what also motivated a lot of people don't know you have your own label, Martin mm-hmm. Records. What motivated mm-hmm. you to um, launch your own label? You know, to be honest, I, I never really wanted a record label. I wanted, uh, I wanted to be able to do dope stuff and be able to put it out there. And uh, you know, I wasn't fighting to be an independent in the beginning. I was just really trying to get my music out, at, you know, any way possible. And when I couldn't sign to any of the labels, nobody was really interested in signing me. I started to figure out my own way to put this out. And this was the early version of Morton Records. It wasn't called that, but I was putting out my own music. Um, but when it when I had people like JoJo around me who were friends of mine and, um, you know, thought, man, the people who I think are amazing, I think they should be out there. And if nobody else is going to put them out there, then maybe I can. And, you know, that's, that's how JoJo and I, um, you know, that's why we decided to do that. Um, so I think for me, it's just that, that it, it also, you know, my motivation for that is also friendship and family. You know, I think that's always where I'm coming from, the love of it. And if I think something is dope, I want it out there. So I figured I just create my own situation to do that. So technically, if building a table was a person, it would be you. (laughs) (laughs) Word, trying my best. (laughs) That is so awesome. So you did mention how you um, came about meeting Jojo and how y'all cooked up and everything. So Mm -hmm. you also produced Jojo's forthcoming debut album Mm -hmm. um, in general. So when you produce a song with an artist, how do you approach writing and creating songs for them? Um, Well, uh, so, I mean, Jojo and I, we go much further than when he signed to me as an artist. I mean, Jojo was 18 years old singing background with me uh when i was playing some clubs that he couldn't even get into because he was too young to get in uh so we 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 go way back that's i think by the time it came from him to be on morton records we had built years and years of friendship so it wasn't that's what i'm saying it wasn't about a, an artist and a record label putting it out this was just family uh but for us once we started to create the album um with me already knowing him, I knew some stuff, but I think my process is usually trying to get to know the artist and get to know what they want to express and what they want to put out there. And um, so I leave room for that. And, and, and it was a collaborative effort on figuring out what JoJo wanted to say and how he wanted to say it. Uh, because I think being a producer, although you guide the ship, it's a very selfless um uh, position to be. I mean, it's not about you, really, you know, it's about you trying to create a space and a vehicle that the artist can can get their feelings and get uh, their message out there. So uh, that's the way we moved. And, and that's the way I normally move. Awesome. Awesome. And this is the last question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we're sure that all the songs will be great. Um, but there but if there's one on this particular album of um, JoJo's, mm-hmm. which one would be your favorite? Oh, wow. Um, man, we got so many, and we've been working on this music for a long time. I guess for me, it's one that came later, which is the newest one, uh, but never left me alone. It's just like, I don't think, you know, for me, I didn't have a song that existed like that, uh, that has you could take the drums out and it'd just be a ballad, you know, no, 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 never could slow it down. And then you, we put that, that shouting beat under it. So it, so you can dance to it too. So it just, it gives you all of that thing. And the way Jojo was telling the story is, is from, is straight from the heart, you know, and I think from the heart connects to the heart. So 
I would have to say uh, Never Left Me Alone is, is, is my favorite now. But it's some it's some good ones on there. <laughs> it, it is. But that Never Left <laughs> Me Alone, that one just stays in your head like for a yeah. long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, Jojo, um, I think you got your uh, mic going. I mean, on mute. Um, so what is it like to work in the studio with PJ? I mean, it's it's mind blowing. He's a genius, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that to be saying that I've, I've worked with him for years. And um, just to see the way his mind works, the way the creativity flows um, lyrically, you know, everybody around him, if you're a writer or a singer, he elevates that, you know, just because of whatever has inspired him, he uses that to inspire you and so forth and so on. And so to hear his ideas, for one, I mean, I would have never thought of Never Left Me Alone, but then I also would have never thought of Nobody Knows. You know, it's, it's these different ideas that, um, because I'm not a concept writer, I don't write things off of what I made up. You know, everything has to be what I've experienced. That's how I can tell you um, a song, it, it, not just sing it, but I can can tell you what it means to me and tell you what I've experienced through lyrics that maybe somebody else wrote because I've had so many different experiences, but working with him, he just knew and knows how to write the sentiments of my heart, what's on my mind, what I've experienced, what I've been through so many. So it's, it's mind blowing is, is the main thing I'm trying to say. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us about the um, song selection process for new albums. And I know sometimes we can have a million songs in mind, but how do you just pick out the songs that are just going to make it on the album? Honestly, this, this was a different process than I've ever seen um, because most of the songs that we wrote um, were right on time. And I wasn't on dialysis. We knew that there was a kidney issue, but we didn't know exactly what was going on. So most of these, all, almost all of these songs were written before I even was going through a dialysis situation. So these songs, it wasn't like we had 40 songs. Yeah. What you hear is exactly what came out of these moments. And then the stuff that's been added since is like perfect because now it's after that journey. You know what I'm saying? So it, which is why Never Left Me Alone is so amazing because there were these songs that were written before the storm, if you will. Yeah. Then there was a song or two in the middle. And then the greatest song that we could have came after, not even right after, but years after I went through everything that everybody saw. You know, so to, to, to be able to say that this is the greatest song not just because of the music or the singing or anything like that, but lyrically. I mean, I can literally tell you everything in these verses that I experienced piece by piece of my journey and of my walking. So, I mean, the process was different than other albums, I'm sure, because we didn't have a bunch of songs to choose from. We, we wrote um, what needed to be. So, Jojo, when did you first realize that you had an amazing gift to offer the world like you did? I mean, I came out the womb singing. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm just kidding. Nah, um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, it's six of us. I'm the fifth boy, five boys, one girl. And, um, you know, I was, I'm a military brat. I was born in Hawaii. We moved to California. I was raised in California. So being in that environment, my father's a pastor, you know, so it was I mean, we just, we got up there because the pastor's kids, that's what they do. They get up there, they sing, they play the instruments, they do whatever they can because we're the first members they'll ever have, right? Right. So, I mean, I wanted to play drums. I I, I didn't know that I, <clears throat> excuse me, had a, had a gift to sing until there were four brothers ahead of me playing drums already and doing everything I wanted to do. So I stepped into singing and that's where it, it came in. My mother was our vocal coach. My father sings. You know, it was just our, it, it, it was, I mean, we were groomed to, to do what we do now. Okay. So with that being said, what was your um, first big break in music? In oh, man. I guess um, when I was 14, maybe, James Moore came. I was in Colorado. James cool. Moore came. That's when he started the Colorado Mass Choir. I was the youngest member. 
and I recorded um, later on. I recorded "So Good," um, which is probably the biggest song most people know from them, besides "Stir Up the Gif." And then I was on every single one of their albums after that. That was my first recording was with uh, Joe Pace and the Colorado Mass Choir. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So um, while you were kicking off your music career, you were diagnosed with kidney disease that um, could really just took in your taking your life. And when I first really knew, knew, knew who you were, that it was that time that Kurt was on stage and he called you up. And my heart was like, oh my God, it was not even really about your story, but when you were just singing that point, I'm like, dang, like, who is this dude? So tell us about that journey dealing with that prime of your life and also just coming into contact with kidney disease. Um, well, it's a genetic kidney d- disease called FSGS. To our knowledge, nobody in our family has it except for me and my oldest brother. So okay. the night that I could fly home to California, they thought I would be the best match since it was genetic, that mm-hmm. they would go further away from who was next in line uh, to see if my kidney would be better to give to him and chances of not having it. Well, mm-hmm. the night before I could fly home, he died. He ended up having a seizure out of nowhere, which doesn't run in our family, and he died. So I never even got tested for anything. It wasn't until I got sick, um, and I thought it was the swine flu, which it was partially, but I ended up in the hospital for 30 days. It took that long before we found out that I carried the same genetic disease. So that whole process was, it was something. It was a, a few years before I ever even went on dialysis. And when I finally did, it just seemed like everything was picking up. I was working on my record with P. I was touring with Josh Groban and Judith Judith Hill. Just so many records were being placed. Just great things were happening. And then, boom, this happens, which I tell people all the time. It wasn't, I I hate to say trial, because it ended up being the greatest season of my life. I experienced some of the greatest journeys my moments in my life during this season that I was in. And then the Kirk Franklin thing for a while, I didn't tell anybody about it. Why? Cause I've been in church my whole life and I know that people don't always know how to pray. So I didn't want people praying the wrong thing. And I knew it was something that I needed to go through and not just come out of why, because there was so much in the going through that I needed for now. And there were so many people that needed to see me go through without the murmuring and the complaining and the doubting and saying, woe is me. You know, so I I decided that I would take that thing head on and use it to give God the glory, use it to be something to make him smile. So I kept going. I was pushing. I toured with Kiki. I was opening up for her. I would tour on the weekends with her. I I still did some touring with PJ. I was doing dialysis from my hotel rooms. I was overseas with James Fortune doing dialysis in that hotel room. You know, I was determined that this was not going to be the stress that my family had known it to be. Right. Because everybody expected that, oh Lord, he's going to die. But I was determined to beat it, and I beat it with a smile on my face. And now look at what we're doing. So that Kirk Franklin night, I didn't really tell anybody that wasn't close to me. And then I didn't have these conversations with God, like I can't believe this is happening. So that night was really just a conversation that I was having with God that I happened to be having at a concert because I hadn't come to Him and told Him, you know, you see what I'm going through, but I just I I ain't never said nothing to you about how I was feeling about it. And that was the first night that that happened. And I was rushing back home after that for dialysis all the way from Jacksonville. So it was a journey, but I tell you, it was the greatest, the greatest, one of the greatest nights of my life to experience God by myself in a room with all of those people and just have a one-on-one with him and say, hey, this is what I, I know you see, but let me tell you what I feel and and where I'm at with it. Right. Yeah, that was it was a real good night to see that, even though you was dealing, it just, you had a fan in me before, but really at that point, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I was like, I, I followed you ever since then, no lie. So the good thing is you have a new song out. Well, you have an album out, but you have a new drop, which is called Never Leave Me Alone. So how does that particular song reflect? And I'm going to drop a snippet of that, y'all. And I also, too, for the ones who are in there, I just placed it in chat. Um, and I also pinned it. So after this, you can see the entire video. But how um, how did that, like, with your kidney journey? Um, Never Left Me Alone. Man, I, I 
I always say when people ask me about the different songs, these songs were written on this album were songs I didn't know I would need. They weren't, I wasn't mm-hmm. counting on dialysis. It was just always a possibility that I would need it. Yeah. So now to have never left me alone to come at a time where I'm like, yo, this is nothing. Th- this is a reminder, not just for me, but for everybody. But because I can tell you every time I, I start to doubt, I know he's never, ever left me alone. You know, when it seems there's no way out, I know he's never left me alone. You know, when I feel too weak to fight, you know, it's like when I, I've experienced this, I've walked it. And now I, I get to sing this, administer th- this song and share this song to people that it, it, it's my issue of kidney disease is no no bigger than your issue of being homeless and not be able to pay your bills. We, uh, I don't I don't glorify what I went through bigger than anything that anybody else is going through because in your world that's the biggest thing you're experiencing right now. So this song is for whatever it is. It's not about kidney disease. It's not about being homeless. It's not about losing people to cancer or COVID or whatever the case. It's about all of that in one big ball. And if you're if you're here to hear this song and to sing it and to learn it, then you're you're a living testament of what this was. Whatever you experienced or are experiencing, this is the greatest testimony you'll ever have. That he's never left you alone. You you survived it. Okay. And with that being said, I'm about to give y'all a 15 second. I'm gonna tease y'all because we want you to go over to YouTube to grab. Um, this video well to watch this video and download it as well so let's do this really quick like I said a little 15 seconds of it every time I start to down I know you never let me alone see I really tease <laughs> I'm a real teaser I'm sorry because I want them to go over there. I don't want to give them all of it here. I want them to definitely go to YouTube and just check it out. Like I said, the link is in the bio. I um, pinned it as well. So after this broadcast, please make sure you go, go over there and check it out. So is there a name or a title to this album yet? I mean, we talked about it. Come on, P. What you <laughs> Come on, P. That's for, that's for you. I mean, I think we have one. I don't think we're ready to... T- I don't think we're ready to tell everybody yet. We okay. just, yeah, we we want to uh, we want to roll it out the right way. But yes, we do have a um, we do have a title for the album, and uh, but the the title we worried about right now is it's never left me alone. That's the, <laughs> that's the title we are right now with the new song. Yeah, but you will hear uh, the title of the new album pretty soon here. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So before we go, I had some crazy fun questions for you guys. I just want to have a little, we should do some icebergers in the beginning, but you know, I do things backwards. So y'all just forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. All right. Ice so let's clo- just. Ice closes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's, let's do this. Where do you like them or not? What are the last three songs that you've listened to? And it goes for both of you guys. So PJ, go first. See, I could cheat on this answer because the last three songs I I listen to are new songs that I'm working on right now because I'm working on a new album. Okay. So I can't even tell you the titles. Well, my piece, one of them is about to come out real soon, uh, but they've been my own personal songs. So I like them a lot, but I'm just <laughs> working on them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, JoJo. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not lying, and, and people tell you, I, people say they PJ Morton fans. I'm the biggest PJ Morton fan you ever be. Okay, let's be clear. Don't so, say actually, me. <laughs> no, for real, for real. So, <laughs> actually, I listen to "Please Don't um, Please Don't Walk Away" for I don't know the last 24 hours. I've only been listening to songs that I need this week uh, just because it's been a different type of week. Um, and then um, All Right. Um, and then before that, I was listening to um, I will uh, Jesus Christ is the Way by the Hawkins. That was good. The last three songs. Of, yeah. Nice. That's good. Nice. So it's gonna be kind of hard to ask you. What do y'all do? Y'all do anything on your downtown besides music? What do you do on your downtown? 
Me? Yeah. I mean, I, I like to hoop. I play basketball. Okay. I play, I'm a car player. I like to play spades. <laughs> and I'm a bowler. I like and movies. Yeah. I haven't been outside that much, but, you know, yeah, I do stuff other than music so I can do good music. I feel like people who only do music, that's not a that's not a sustainable place to be. You got to do some other stuff so you could so you could live and write about life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't recommend music all the time. <laughs> I agree, 110. How about you, Jojo? I like to bowl. Um, I love architecture. So um, I've been on this crazy architecture kick, just putting together um, what I've seen, what I love, um, and what I want. Um, and then also, um, I play dominoes. Uh, that's my thing. It's my heart. And I cook. So I was about to say, come on, Jojo. You, cook. you, you <laughs> making me hungry too much on those social I media. Do, I do my level best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the last question is, if Drake were to run for president in 2024, who should be his VP running mate? Drake. <laughs> Kanye? Oh, yeah. Kanye? Oh, yo, they've done so well so far. All in yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, his producer all this time has been, his sidekick has been uh, 40 all yeah. this time. So 40 should be his running mate for sure. Yeah. yeah. Done deal. <laughs> you agree, Jojo? That's his, that's his oh, producer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, guys, real quick, I just want to drop one more snippet. Okay. Link is in the bio. Please go over there and support the project. Here we go. I knew that you would always be right there because you never left me alone. Money was gone, couldn't pay my ring. But Lord, you never left me alone. But until the time came and went, oh, you never left me alone. Oh, it was no goodness of my own. Man. Man, y'all listen. It's still, it's still, I still feel that. I was yeah. in the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if the entire album is going to be like that, like, we ready. We, we ready. We got y'all. <laughs> we got y'all. Thank you guys so much for coming on. PJ, JoJo, let everybody know how they can follow you really quick. Go ahead, Joe. Um, you can follow me. I got a website, jojobartonmusic.com. Jojo's voice on every single platform you can find, except for TikTok. It's Jojo Martin 84 for whatever reason somebody took Jojo's voice. But that's where I'm at. I'll let your boy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, pjmortonmusic.com is the website and at pjmorton um, everywhere. Thank yeah. you all for agreeing to support um, Set Apart and Shows and then bringing the project over here. I really do appreciate it. Jojo, you know for a fact that I support you big time. Thank you. PJ, been a fan forever, ever. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. you yeah. guys so much. We will here at Set Apart and Shows, we will forever support both of you guys. Thank so you. thank you so much, family, for joining us on Set Apart and Shows and the Valika B Project. If you missed this, you can definitely drop in the morning on our podcast. And have a great rest of your evening. And make sure you support both of these amazing men of God. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. God bless. All right, y'all. Well, that concludes this episode of the Valika B Project with your host, Valika B. Until next time we meet, be blessed. The Valika B Project. <laughs>